Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. I was saying a second ago, I've seen a couple of y'all in the sessions that I've been a part of as well. So it's fun to see you here in this session today, App Smashing to Amplify Student Voice. So I'm Carrie Shell. There's my Twitter account if you want to follow me. Um, and today we are focusing on three apps. It will be a session that um, you would use iPads with your students in the classroom, whether you have a few, whether you are one-to-one -one, or you can check out from your librarian. So I know in SAISD, there's a couple of ways to um, have access to iPads and I see some people from other districts here as well. So let's get moving. We will have the um, chat open and Mr. Jeffrey Schauberger, he is going to be monitoring that for me. And at the end of the session, we will put in the survey link so y'all can get your CE credit. So I am Carrie Schell from um, SEISD EdTech and Design Office. So this is a little bit about us, our mission and our vision. In order not to read the whole thing to you, you can see our vision is about engaging our students in their communities. And then our mission is all about empowering our students and teachers with their learning experiences that gives them access to digital resources. Now we know we have a lot of teachers here and our, it's important that what we're doing has our T-Test connection. And for this PD, I chose data and assessment because being able to hear what your students are saying and expressing themselves through their learning, you're going to be able to grab a lot of formative assessment pieces when your students are using these apps. Just some norms for y'all, feel free to unmute. Please interrupt if you have a question or type it in the chat. If you're not speaking, please be on mute. And then if you have any comments, in the chat, we will address them as quickly as possible. Our objectives. So we have three objectives. They can kind of be intertwined. The first one here, um, I wanna make sure everyone knows how to use clips. It may be an intro to it. Um, if you've used clips before, please speak up and little things that you um, practice with it, then we will also be able to add things we do in sketches and chatter picks, and then come up with some ideas for using it in our classroom. And I do have some ideas that I brainstorm, but I'm looking forward to hearing how y'all can see this in your situations with your students. I'm gonna start us off with two student examples. So these are students um, in, kindergarten and first grade. So I did choose some primary examples. I like to show primary because if a primary student can grasp the concept and complete a project, our middle school secondary students are definitely able to use these component, these apps as well. So I'm gonna show you two examples. You can see one um, is from a dual language classroom, how she has her, um, introduction right there and the other is from a gen ed classroom. Let me reshare Samantha. Can't hear, can anyone else hear it? Okay. I'm going to make sure you have my, right, just a second. It always does that, right? In all our Zoom, all our Zooming. Look at that. Okay, thanks, Samantha. For letting me know. Okay, I'm gonna start it over. You should be able to hear it now. Hola, yo soy Ariana y hoy les voy a enseñar los objetos iguales y los objetos diferentes. <laughs> 
La concha es rasposa y el papel es largo. Estas cosas están iguales porque la roca es blandita y la, el corazoncito negro es blandito. So that was one example. Um, I did want to share authentic samples with you. Maybe it's not going to be um, exactly how an adult or secondary student would do, but I just love to hear their voices. Here's another example for you. This is my movie all about shapes. My shapes and are the different, different because the, one the, has the blue one, sides and the blue one square is has um, yes. The blue one is square and the other one and is the way it's also different. It has one is yellow and one is blue. My shapes are different because one has sides and one doesn't have sides. My shapes are the same because one has no sides and one doesn't have no sides, I guess. My shapes are different because mine has sides and one doesn't have sides. This is the end of shapes. Bye. <laughs> so, um, you know, I'm watching it back and I'm, I'm gathering a lot of quick data on that child. Um, he understands no sides and sides, but I would rather him have said straight sides or curved sides. So like that quick piece I got because I got to hear him over and over say that part. And um, I think that's one of the big highlights I want you to take away with you is to gather that information and to just, we're gonna really better understand what our kids are learning and understanding from our lessons. So I hope you liked them because they're so cute. <laughs> okay, so first we're gonna jump into sketches. So how I've set this up is We'll look at the apps, just screenshots, and instead of creating a recording with you, um, I'm just gonna screen share my iPad. That way you can see me interact with it live. And then if you have an iPad with you, you can always grab it out. Um, I know in SAISD, these apps that I am using are approved and they are in our app portal. If you don't see in your app portal, reach out to IT with the help desk help desk ticket and they can push it to your iPad. So here we have in sketches, when you um, log in, and I will say, I call it sketches, but it has a very long first word that you'll see, it starts with a T, it's like T-S, in sketches school. So you'll see you can create folders in it. And then when you, I touched into the folder, I get this view so I can see pages I've created already. And then I can see how to add a new clean book page. Then in the page, they're all the same. So I have access to drawing tools here, shape and fill. There is an eraser with two different ways to erase. One tap all to erase all layers or just erase part with your, you know, like holding your finger to the iPad and erasing. And then there's some other tools down here and I can show you what they kind of do. One is a blending tool, and then there's a slicer and then a ruler. Now, what's not super intuitive is that I have to teach, I've noticed I have to teach my students is the color select is at the bottom and it shows one color. And when you touch that one color, they all pop up and populate. And I apologize, it looks like at the top, I had some information and it's been cut off, but basically, um, it tells me I can import and export. There's gonna be three dots at the top. And then also there's um, a way to get back to a new page, like back to my folder view. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is jump into sketches and practice. So I'm gonna do a quick share, a reshare from, um, to my iPad.
Okay, there we go. All right, so I'm gonna go to Sketches School. I don't know about y'all, but I like to put my folders um, in, like you see, I am Apple, I am Google, I can create. That's just a little fun way, I think, of organizing. So I'm in I can create today and all of the things that we were doing, clips, sketches, and chatter picks are in there. So I'm going to sketches first. And you can see here that I have two folders made as examples. I have my science folder and social studies. I can add a new folder right here, just the same. What is nice in sketches as well is if I go this way, I can find help. So there's the tools, tell me about it and then learn sketches. So it has it built in to the app, which is um, pretty nice. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt the, we can't see anything on your screen. Oh no. Bree, can you see my, here, let me stop sharing. I'll do the new share this way. Let's see. Okay, Samantha, tell me if you can see it. It's about to jump in now. No, yes? Lisa yes, can no. see it? Yes. Okay, so it liked me then. I see how Zoom is being today. Luckily, I'm a pretty easygoing person, so all good. All right, so I'm gonna jump into social studies because I've been working with my students on government services and um, we've been talking about firefighters and so, I want them to label and interact with a firefighter. So what I have done is I'm going to actually import from my photos. So I've already saved a photo to my iPad. Down here at the bottom, I can change the size, opacity. I wanna make it bigger like this, right? Put it there and I do my check mark. So once I do that, I have all my tools back. And I'm just gonna do little things, right? So on the back, well, let me change the color. So here my color popped up. I have my oxygen. The students might say air, right? I'm gonna act like I'm a student. And then I have my helmet. And you see what I'm doing. I'm just interacting with the piece. Pretty basic to get my kids started. Um, so they can tell me what they've learned about a firefighter. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna save this. I am gonna add in some little fire and I'm gonna get the blend tool to make it look like really stand out. And I am just using one tool. I find this is one of my favorites over here. The, um, this one that I'm on right here, it'll pop back up, that guy. Um, but then if you look through the others, there's some paintbrush ones. They're just a little pale, so you really have to understand your intention and where you're coloring. And so it just depends. So this one's a little darker, right? And then I want to use my, I believe this one is the smudge. Oh, yeah, just wanna like make my fire. I can add um, text and shapes. So when you choose the text, the word, that's the text that you want to write with. And then you see the shapes, that would be the shape and everything can be um, changed color. So I'm gonna choose this one and I'm gonna write stop, drop and roll. And then I'm gonna move that where I want it. And I want it to be in purple. And then down at the bottom, I have my check mark, right? So my students are all um, drawing. Hopefully I have Apple Classroom set up, which is a whole nother thing, but really amazing if you need to check that out. So I can see what all of my students are doing. I wanna erase this arrow so it makes more sense. Now, after we're done, um, if you wanted them to do more, you could. I would just hit those um, four squares at the top and that takes me back out. So you can see my pictures there, it will save. Um, I know this because my daughter has drawn me multiple pictures um, and they are all always there. So I can do another plus sign and I can go into a police officer and so forth, where they're pulling in all their government services they're learning about. 
but I want to make sure that I have captured this because I want to use this in my next app. So when I hit my three dots, I'm going to go to export and I want to save the image. I like the little tweak because the students know I said, did you hear the bird? If you don't hear the bird, you can see there were a lot of different options for exporting. Okay, so I'm gonna jump back over. This time I'm just gonna do a stop. It's not as clean, but I do wanna make sure it shares correctly. So hopefully that y'all are all good. Were there any questions so far about sketches that have come up? Okay. Okay, so next is Chatterpix. And Chatterpix is a really fun, a little silly at first, but once they get past that first um, initial, like getting to play, you know, engage in it in a way that might not be truly academic, um, it can be used in academics and it's just great to make their um, work come to life and hear their voice. So here we have some examples. So what I've done here is I've taken screenshots to show you the steps. So it starts with, um, you have your image, you have to take a picture and then you have to draw a line and then record. And then after you get that, there's different filters, text, stickers that the students can add to it. And then here is the special button that saves it as a video to their device, which then they could upload to your LMS, whether you're using um, Schoology, Canvas, and Seesaw, which is what we use here in SASD. Okay, so now I'm gonna jump into Chatterfix, but I'm gonna do the quick stop because I want to make sure y'all see and here, this app has a very distinct sound when you first turn it on, um, which is kind of fun because when the kids start it, you will know if they're on it because of the little introduction it has. If you haven't ever opened this app before, it's really cute. Okay, so Jeffrey, I'm good. You can see my screen. Can you see my iPad? Okay. So we are in, I can create, and I'm gonna open Chatterpix. Okay, every time you open it, it does that. So that's why you know, you'll hear them all get ready. So I'm choosing take photo gallery on Chatterpix. They have, well, you can see some things I've done. But down here, these are universal examples that they have on every um, Chatterpix gallery that the students can go to and listen for examples. But today we wanna do our photo. So right now you see it's screen because you can see the back of my screen. I can rotate the camera, but today for our purposes, I am going to choose the image of my firefighter that I just created. So down that on the left, I chose from my photo library. And this is the one I want. If your students were drawing this or had any picture or paper in front of them, they could just take a picture of it. I'm gonna click next at the top. And so now it's going to prompt me to draw a line. This line is going to be what makes the um, picture come to life and it'll look like it's talking. I'm actually gonna make the fire talk. and then I'm going to speak. Um, you'll see it only gives them a certain amount of time to record, which is something I really like about this app because it doesn't allow them to go on and on and on. They have to be more precise to know what they want to say. It does let them re-record if um, they missed something. I do encourage my students to always stop and listen to what they just said before they continue. A firefighter 
helps protect people from fires. They wear a mask, helmet, and they have air on the back that they carry. A firefighter has told me if I am caught on fire, I should stop, drop, and roll. So then I can press play and listen to it. And then I can also see where it's going to open its mouth and what it's gonna look like and what I wanna say, right? And then if I did not like what I said, I can press the red microphone and re-record. So I'm gonna to go to next. And then we have our stickers. I do, oh, look, there's a fire sticker. I do like to tell my students um, two or three stickers max to help limit us and keep us focused. But it's fun just to do little things. I always like to put it like there. And I think there's some, I thought there were some eyes. The mouth, if you put the mouth over the, um, and I can show you all that too. If you put the mouth over where the line is, it'll make the mouth open. And that's a really fun look. It's this mouth. Um, and what you can't see is when I'm moving it, I'm just using a two finger touch and I'm just making it bigger and smaller with my fingers, which is really nice, um, especially if you're working with younger students. It's not, it's not very difficult or challenging. I could add in text um, a frame and then there's also filters that I could add. I'm gonna leave it just like that with my stickers. I'm gonna click next. And then there I am. So here's where you have to make sure the students choose the save. So the bottom right, um, don't let them leave until it shows that it is complete. If they leave before it's complete, it won't be on the iPad photos. It will um, just stay in the gallery of Chatterpix, which doesn't talk to the other apps like the photos do. Yes, Lisa, it's like a mini animation. And I can, I'll share with you some ideas, but really you can make everything come to life. So export complete, I am good to go. And I just touch out of that, like so. Okay, so we're jumping back. Y'all are being awesome with me with my super not smooth transfer from presentation to iPad. I appreciate that. So are there any questions about Chatterpix so far? I would like to see. What is it, Lisa? How would you like to see how the mouse over the fire moves? Oh, I'm gonna show you, thank you. Next time I connect, I will show you, sorry. <clears throat> okay, so our last app, our third one is Apple Clips. And Apple Clips is where I'm going to bring it all together. This is a native app on the iPad. And here I have a picture of the project dashboard. There's lots of things happening on this where I can add images in, add videos, posters, there's different effects you can add. And you can see I've tried to label things, right, for you to like click see. So I can take a picture, I can hold this to record, or I can record myself on the video with here. I add effects and stickers that are native to the app. So you don't have to bring those in. Those are there to choose from. Or you can choose from your library and add in um, pictures, videos, or they also have native posters. And then down here at the bottom, you're gonna see your clips here. So it's called clips because the students do not have to continuously record themselves, which is what I love about this because sometimes they need to stop and make a plan, right? Sometimes they need to think they need to have parts of it. Sometimes the class period ends and they need to go to their next class. And so clips allows for you to have those moments and then at the end, when you press play, it plays like a movie. It does have the ability to edit a single clip. So you can see here, I've selected my clip and it does have editing tools 
if there was a part that needs to be taken out, you can slice, you can split like that and trim. Now, as we move into this last part of the app, smashing it all together, I did think of some goals, two big goals, and I didn't know if everyone would have seen this information before. So I did little bullets underneath them. So multimodal learning, um, if you are actively using Seesaw, especially in this past year, they brought something like this in. And then I can see it working for any time you're working with apps and with students with technology. Um, and then also it's aligned to the taught teeth. So like using app smashing in your classroom. And so these are the, the components of the taught teeth. Using technology application teeth is what that stands for. Okay, so we're gonna practice. So I'm gonna live on my iPad for just a little longer this time. And then we'll come back and look at some project ideas and finish out right there. So I'm gonna do a last iPad share. Lisa, I'm gonna make sure that I play the video for you first. I can show you where everything is housed in my photo library. Okay, I almost said, luckily it's been connecting for me really fast, but I didn't wanna say it until it actually connected not want to jinx that. So here in my photos, I can see here my chatter pics. Let's see if it will play. Wear a mask, helmet, and they have air on the back that they carry. Perfect. So now I'm gonna to go to, in my I can create folder, my Apple Clips. So here you can see the top of the room I'm in, right? There's me. Hi, everyone. And then what I want to do is I want to first add in a poster to introduce my work. So when I choose poster, these are the posters that it already has. You can see the little girl's pink one that she chose there. Um, some of them are just colors and others are very fancy looking, really fun, um, and as you can see. Now they say letters, every thing can be edited. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose. I might choose the summer one. Then as it comes up, I'm just going to edit the text all about, and I'm just gonna put firefighters, so that's what I'm adding in right now, right? Now, anytime you want to add something to your clips, I'm just gonna hold the red button. So I'm gonna have to click out and try a different thing. So this time I'm gonna do my photos. Just to be able to move on, I will add in my chatter pics. I will do add and I want to do add to project because it's already a video itself. So here it is at the bottom. You can see how I have different things I can do to it and I can click done. And what I'm going to do also is just to add in the picture. So the picture is not already recorded. So I want to do preview and record. But let, let's see, it might just be because I'm on Zoom sharing. I think that's why it's not letting me um, create a video, which makes sense because I'm already using the iPad video. But this red button is what is going to let you add recording. Anytime I hold it down, I can say and speak to my image, anything that I want that would go with my project. What I'm gonna do, so you can see the two, I'm gonna take a video. I'm gonna take the same video and add it to project. So we can see at the bottom how there's the two clips and I have one and two. So y'all see that? And then when you pr I press play, it would seamlessly go together. Do I have any questions about that so far? I know, I mean, for me, it's not working exactly how I'd want it on Zoom, but that's okay. 
I see Amanda, you put, when you taught kindergarten, they loved using chatter picks. Yes. I used it in kindergarten too, and they did love it. But then the upper kids, as you get older, especially in elementary, they still will like it. They're just big kids, right? Okay, there's no questions so far. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to take me out of this. And then we're gonna go back so I can show you some ideas I had for this project. Hopefully you got as a little sense of what it's like to use clips. Once you dive into it, I would say keep it simple at first because your students will um, pick it up pretty fast. Sorry, there's an echo. I'm gonna have to let my iPad go. Um, your students will pick it up pretty fast. Um, I have successfully used this app with younger kids. So that tells me these older kids, they can do it. All right, so here are some project ideas. And y'all tell me, y'all speak out or put in the chat if you think you have something that you would also do with them. So here I have some social studies ideas. Um, sometimes I think social studies gets overlooked and Jeffrey likes that I'm saying that because he's like social studies. But I see how if we bring in um, other components like using my iPad with it, we could really make it a big thing. So I was thinking like elementary, you can see identify government services, middle school, events of the Texas revolution, a hit you in high school, US history, identifying the causes of World War I. So the kids could make this into a real collaborative effort. It doesn't have to be just one student. And then in reading some ideas, retelling stories, character analysis, um, a way that I've been very successful is having the students create, write, their own stories, um, creating the backdrop, creating all the parts of their story. So they got to really tap into not just using the iPad, but their own creativity and writing skills. And then you have a 60 second book report, article, and then high school, some poetry presentations. Can you imagine hearing poetry being different, read in different ways based on the feel or the style of the poem and like how our students could make that come to life? And in math, I was thinking in elementary school, how to measure objects. In middle school, how to solve, like a how-to, that the kids could create a how-to video. How to solve one-step problems or two-step equations. One step, one variable, two-step equations, sorry. And then in high school, finding the Pythagorean theorem in real life. These are just a little, a couple of things I see, Samantha. You used it and we did little mini biographies, understanding the role of historical fiction figures. Um, yeah, I'm wondering, well, I know, um, Samantha, are you in SAISD or are you in a different district? Yeah, you're, um, I know in SAISD, a lot of our circumstances come that the library has iPads to check out. So I wonder if that's something that your district would think about so the teachers and the kids still had access to that piece of technology? We used to have that, but now at some of the high schools, there a lot of the iPads went to the elementary schools since that's what the elementary schools are using. Um, and so we are working currently to kind of restock those supplies at the high schools. Um, yeah. But we do have limited numbers of, of iPads. So, you know, uh, one alternative, though, is, is Blabberize. Um, it's kind of a sort of like chatter picks, but they can get put on the Chromebooks. Um, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I'll have to check that out. I haven't ever used that one. I'm um, also thinking, you know, because there's so many different ways to video edit, because Clips is basically a video editor where students um, add in information. And there's definitely access to that on Chromebooks. Did anyone else have any other ideas maybe or something that they thought about when we were going through this together? And it's okay if not, because I know you're here to get ideas from me. And write down my info. I know, uh, um, I think I saw that Jeffrey put the 
um, survey in the chat already. Yes, Jeffrey. Follow me on Twitter, but also here's my email. It's in the chat. So you can feel free to email me and contact me with any questions or support.